Hey everyone, this is Jasmine. I'm a Reiki and Mental Alchemy practitioner. My Instagram handle is San Pluto Alchemist. And if you would like to check out more about me or about what I do, I'm going to leave my details below so you can check them out. So I feel like I've got a bit of a wardrobe malfunction today. I wore this top and not realizing that I probably don't have a proper place to clip my mic. So you, it may appear to be just a little bit soft today. And also I would like to apologize to anybody, if, if there is even anybody who was waiting for my video last week. I intend to release the second part of manifestation video last week but because I was so preoccupied with my assignment, it became this week. I'm so sorry if you are waiting. So for the second part of how to manifest your desire, I'm going to talk more about healing your mental body as well as how astrology play a part and a little bit about your physical body as well. So today I'm going to talk more about, I would say, CBT in terms of like CBT point of view which is cognitive behavioral therapy and which is where I got you know inspired about how to heal your mental body so um, according to this modality is that when something triggers you you will start to allow you to form thoughts in a certain way which will trigger you to take certain actions that lead you to have certain outcome or certain consequence. I totally agree with that. It's just that from my point of view, it's more of like when certain situation triggers you, um, it's not just that it triggers you to think of things in a certain way, but to me, in my mind, it forms like a glue. It's kind of like your emotions are glued to that thoughts that you have. Also at the same time, the emotions actually come with certain narrative or certain storyline and that kind of like forms like a glue that's glued together together with the thoughts that actually forms a very strong relationship or strong resistance to it again that leads you to to have certain behavior or like certain take certain actions that will lead to the same consequence or the outcome so which is why this is why I feel like um, you know how the actual the conventional or the traditional CBT practitioner when they they just come in with the approach or the mindset of like you know what just allow me to recondition you allow me to just change your thoughts reframe your mind reframe your thoughts and that itself is gonna like help you feel like an entirely different person to take a different action that leads to a different outcome I personally actually feel that it's not that simple. I feel like, of course, there's a lot of people out there to say that, oh, you know, you need to hold space for the emotions, you need to allow the person to like regulate themselves, all this kind of thing. But I feel like nobody actually say that, um, that the thoughts, the emotions, and as well as the narrative actually all comes hand in hand. And um, probably there are people out there who already said this, but um, I just felt like this is very important. Which is well, I feel like this is important in the sense that we always need to dive in deep into the emotions and into the narrative at the same time. So let's say you already have like um, the motivation or like you have kind of, kind of like already decide that, you know what, I'm definitely going to change my thought forms. I'm going to definitely change my belief system. This is, you know, I want to believe the new one where I Maybe you want to believe that I can make it in life, my dreams can come true, for example. But there is always this tug of war within you that you not really like, unsure that you can, you know, really pinpoint to it. Or you always feel like, you know what, I'm just going to apply more resistance onto the other side where I want to go to, to make this happen. But I always feel like, it's actually the emotions and of course of all of the stories, all of the narratives that come with it, that actually creates resistance that's actually attached to your ego that stops you from having, you know, having the new thought forms in with ease or to like for you to be able um, to consciously choose that new train of thoughts easily or like more at flow because you need to really look at the emotions and narrative that's attached to it. So like for example, for myself, because I have, you know, I have a strong belief about, you know, spirituality, about like manifestations, about, 
the matrix and the hermetic principle so whenever I kind of like speak out about such things right and when I have let's say if it's just a comment on the internet or even sometimes it's like in real life that I've met someone who challenges my belief who say like oh this is bullshit it's not real it's just all in your mind like my past reaction my past um, thought will be like I get really triggered my actions is actually to always go behind that person's back where I feel of resentment, I feel of anger and I try to like, you know, find evidence in my mind to kind of like pinpoint why that person got it wrong, why that person is wrong, why that person is at fault and why is that person, you know, like doing all these not nice things to me, being disrespectful about my belief where I just kind of like gossip behind that person's back. But when I truly sit with myself and when I truly like kind of like dive deeper into my psyche, that is when I realize that I come to a realization that when I was a child, whenever I voice my opinion, whenever I voice my preferences, my parents will always kind of like either diss me away or kind of say like, oh, you know, you are a child, uh, you don't know what you're talking about, you're overthinking this, you are da da da, all this kind of thing. And it always made me feel really powerless, like my words and my opinion doesn't count. And it always made me feel like I, you know, my belief doesn't matter, my opinion doesn't matter. And it's always get, got overwritten by somebody else's belief and thought forms. So like, um, if some of you out there know it, anger and resentment are actually covered emotions. And when you really, because they are like the protector part is trying to protect you and you really, when you really sit with them long enough, you can actually get into the primary emotions. Like for me in this case, it's actually powerlessness. I feel like no matter what stand that I have, no matter what opinion and belief that I have, it's going to be not respected, it's going to be overwritten by somebody else. So that, that thought form of like, a, you know, I'm powerless may come out and the emotions that's actually attached to it is actually powerless, but it's been covered out by resentment and anger. And that itself always leads me to kick in. The action that I always take is to just badmouth about that person, just gossip about that person. And it always leads me to the same outcome. Like maybe I may feel better, but it doesn't allow me to take actions that actually leads me to explore this belief about manifestation, about this um, belief about like spirituality. So I'm always in the mode of defending myself, but never in the mode of like creating. So after sitting down with myself, sitting down with this part of me who feels powerless, who feels like it's always been this the part, like I allow myself to feel the emotions of powerless and I allow that part of me to speak, to kind of like say to me like, hey, you know what? I don't need you to always jump into the protector mode. I don't need you to always like defend and make the other party wrong. I just probably need you to listen to me more, to let me allow me to share with you what my beliefs are so that you can take more aligned action. So, you know, after sitting with myself long enough, allowing myself to regulate my emotions, regulate my stories, and then slowly allow myself to come, you know, with peace and alignment with what that part of me wants me to do, my needs and my, my needs for this part. I come to a place of like, okay, what that part needs of me is to actually stop defending myself is to actually take more aligned actions to actually bring up like this, allow my this part of me to like speak its belief, to like share. So like previously when I was like always jumping into a defense mode of like protecting myself or even to the extent of like not sharing any part of me because I don't want to feel triggered, like I'm always staying hidden. But when I allow myself to, you know, let that part be, be heard and speak, I can actually change my belief a lot more at ease and then changing my actions that comes along with it and in this case creating youtube channel and then allowing me to you know share my beliefs share my learning share whatever take i have on certain things i'm actually probably taking more aligned actions that align myself with that path even more so i i feel like even though this might be a bit profound for some of you but i feel like this is the way that you can 
you know, align or look at your thoughts even more. So, of course, it's not going to be like a structured or like a, a straight line process, a, a linear process of like getting there. But I think it's more of, you know, looking at your thoughts, looking at your frame, like your frame of thoughts, your beliefs, allowing all of the stories to come up, doing, um, approaching it in terms of like CBT and as well as internal family system or psychodynamic both at the same time that you have to negotiate uh, negotiate might not be the right word but we're like really listening to it like hearing its stories allowing itself allowing that part of you to tell you its wants and needs and aligning yourself with the new belief or the new thought form that you want to change to so of course um, I want to be wary about this as well like um, I would say like to choose a new belief system or a new train of a thought forms that help you align more with the things that you desire or you want to manifest or to step into the new self, um, the new and improved self that you want to walk into. But be very, very wary not to guess like yourself because there might be a chance that you feel like you couldn't find love, you couldn't, you know, be loved and stuff like that. And to jump straight into like a, you know what, I can be loved. Like I, I'm, I am that very lovable and famous person. That, that probably is not going to like serve you very much. And in fact, there is a big chance that you even find it hard to believe it in yourself. And also, I just want to like um, put this out there. If let's say you intend to look for a CBT counsellor, or to look for like a CBT practitioner, therapist, how, however you want to frame it. How, who is the person who determine whether you have the erroneous thoughts in the first place or not? And what do we frame to? Will be, it's going to be determined by your counsellor or your like that therapist or like the practitioner. So I just want to put it out there to be very wary, be cautious who you pick as your CBT practitioner because somewhere somehow you are going to form like a connection or like a support system with the counsellor, the practitioner and you don't want it to be supported, to be changed into, to be reframed by the person who has their own limiting belief and conditioning as well. I mean it will be even better so say like if let's say you are a spiritual person you want to choose, um, you know, a, a person like a practitioner who believes in spirituality, who practices spirituality, or like if let's say um, you have picked um, a certain form of like religion as your belief, you know, pick like the same, the same form of like, um, like a religious counselor that may align with your values, that may align with your beliefs. And the next thing I want to talk about is surrender so I believe like if you have been on this track of like discovery or like uh, like trying to get to know more about how to manifest your desires and stuff like that you definitely will hear about the word surrender and there is a lot of like practices out there a lot of like um, how people understood this word surrender so I just want to say like um, I understand the word a little bit differently than how people out there how they are like saying it so personally right what I hear a lot is kind of like you know you need to have faith you need to believe you need to kind of like even though it hasn't happened before you need to believe just just you know I feel like to me it's always like putting your showing hands and then allowing the universe to do its job my personal experience is actually not that easy like there is no way that you're gonna like just just throw everything up and say like, you know what, universe is just going to do all of this job for me. I believe entirely, I surrender. It's not going to happen like that, just like that. Especially if um, throughout your whole life, right, you don't even have like authoritative figure or you don't even have like someone in your life who kind of like allows you to be supported, allows you to, to like really take care of you 100%. It makes it like even more so difficult like even more difficult for you to surrender to universe to surrender to something that is not even I would say like proven it's not even something like you can see with your eyes it's not something even like tangible it's definitely not gonna happen just like that for sure 
So um, this is my personal experience where ever since I start putting my offering out there or start putting my YouTube channel out there, I've always struggled with believing or like surrendering. There is always this tug of war inside of me of like, what more can I do? Am I going to be let down? There's a lot of questioning, there's a lot of anxiety. And I did like a lot of, a lot of healing work to, for this part who have never ever learned to trust before because it felt like almost my whole life I have been the person who's been supporting myself. I've been the person who has been like, like the only person I can depend on. I have to slowly, slowly work through this part of me. So it can be easy as like uh, just sitting with the part of me that feels all of this anxiety or as it could be like, you know, at night I do a journal, like picking up all of the evidence that I see that to show that I have been supported. And slowly, slowly, it's, the, thing, the thing about this is like, it's not going to be an overnight walk. It's not going to be like a thing whereby like, you know, there's just one exercise that I need to do and then therefore I can surrender. It's not like finding the perfect formula, but doing all of the things that you feel like you need to do. It allows you to release all of this anxiety, release all of this unsureness and stuff like that. And then slowly anchoring in all of this evidence. And for me, I even said something like, you know what, show me all of this is real. Show me an evidence this is real. And allow that to slowly, slowly change your perception, slowly, slowly to change your belief system. And eventually, what I strive for, right, and I feel like this is a key thing for me, I don't strive to surrender. I don't strive to have faith. I strive to know. I strive to know that this is, this is working for me. I strive to know that this, I am supported. I don't know, I it just feel like this change of word for me, it does magic because I don't just believe, because even belief itself is kind of like up in the air. It's kind of like, yeah, you know what? I'm not really sure, but yeah, I just want to have faith for it, faith for it, but it's not. For me, it's like I actually know that this is working for me and it's not an overnight task is not an overnight journey. There is no magic wand that you can just wave, wave and you just get there miraculously. But just know that the more you do, the more you work at it, you are going to arrive at a place that you know. You know that it's going to happen for you. And like I say, right, the next thing I want to talk about is everything takes time. So uh, I know that there are a lot of teachers out there, a lot of like healers out there. They just tell you, say that it does not take any time. It actually happened just like that. The only thing that is blocking you is actually your mind that you thinking that it takes time. Personally, I don't think so through my own experience because number one, um, we are existing in a 3D world, a, a third density world where everything is pretty dense. And which is why like even things to be manifested into the reality, into the 3D world, definitely takes time. I believe that, you know, you setting your intention and then sending out to the universe, right? Yes, that doesn't take time to manifest in the ethos, but it takes time for you to set an intention out there and then for the intention to like come back and to be manifested in your reality. That takes time. So I just also want to put it out there like when there are certain um, practitioners or certain healers out there that say like, you know what, you just need to do this energy work with me. You need to kind of like come to me with, I don't know, light language, some energy healing modality, even like Reiki and tell you that, you know what, you just need to do this um, and it doesn't take time. It's your own belief system. No, like to me, no, everything takes time. And the next thing I want to talk about is actually healing work. And yes, to set an intention and to send it out in the universe, into the ethers, manifesting it in the ethers do not take time. But the other thing that takes time is actually healing work. So to allow your stories, your emotions, your narrative to come out, right? It needs to be safe enough. Your body, your, your body and I think, I think your psyche would actually need to feel safe enough for it, for your childhood trauma, for like whatever triggers or like trauma or like your emotional narrative to come up layer by layer and you are going to look at it like stories by stories, layer by layer, emotions by emotions 
like however much, however, whatever stories that's allowed to be surfaced, which is based on how safe you feel you are right now, and then you are going to look at it layer by layer, and you're going to kill yourself layer by layer. That itself takes time. There is no way, not a chance that somebody say like, you know what, you just need to do this energy healing work with me, you need to do this activation with me, and then it's like, just like that, you are clear, you are fine, and you are there. No, if let's say everything is so simple and so easy, I don't see a point being incarnate, incarnated into this world where you're supposed to learn, you're supposed to experience and if let's say there's a magic wand out there just to make all of the painful stuff disappear, you're not really experiencing and I don't feel like there is a point for you to even come down to earth. So uh, my advice, the other advice that I really want to give is that I, I really want to give you credit if you are kind of like looking at your childhood stuff, your triggers and all of the painful memories and stuff like that um, by yourself because indeed there are like a lot of books, there are a lot of people that are teaching, like even for myself, I'm like, I try to share as much like healing tips or like this concept of like how to heal yourself, how to look at your painful dra trauma by yourself. But if you can afford it, and if you feel like it resonates with you, at least for like the first phase of your healing journey, it will be really helpful that if you can bring um, someone into your journey, into your healing journey to actually get the proper support. Because, I mean, this is through my personal experience. Um, when you are doing it by yourself, right? Because you are by yourself, there's only so much, so much that you can allow your emotions and your narrative to come up. But when you are being witnessed by somebody else, that somebody is holding space and co-regulating with you, and the stories and all of the narratives and the emotions, when it comes up and when it feels accepted and it feels validated and it feels okay, and accepted by the space holder, it's going to feel so much different. It's going to make so much difference. And I would say like the speed and the amount of things, uh, the deep, like amount of healing that you can do with someone holding space is actually really different. It makes a really huge difference. And also the other advice I want to share is that um, when you look for a support, it really depends on whether you are looking for someone who's just like, maybe your intention is to kind of like, I want to look at my childhood trauma, I want to look at my triggers, I just want to like someone to hold space. There are counsellor or therapists out there that practices PCT, person-centered therapy, um, where they kind of like hold unconditional positive regard for you, they, um, they just want to be authentic, they just want you to be yourself and be authentic. I think um, you don't really have to share the same belief system. But if let's say you are looking for someone to practice CBT to help you change your mindset, your belief, then I would say like um, it's probably important to look for a practitioner who shares the same belief as you. So again, I just want to have a quick share that personally I do do um, Reiki. I do practice Reiki healing and as well as mental alchemy. Which is, which is inspired by active imagination, an approach that is discovered or like invent, I don't know, created by Carl Jung, which is kind of like diving into your psyche, allowing your emotions and your stories to come up so that we can, you know, hear them or like rewrite them from that unconscious part of you rather than just um, rewriting it from the conscious part of you. So if anybody is interested, you can reach out to me as well. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here for now because I don't want to like tire everybody out by like ch like chucking all of the information. Um, the next one uh, I'm gonna talk about is about astrology, about your physical body, and as well as just some other little little suggestion and tips and nuggets of sharings that um, I I feel is it might help you with your journey. Thank you for watching. If you've watched this. This is Jasmine, I'm a Reiki and Mental Alchemy practitioner. My Instagram handle is SunPlutoAlchemist and if you are interested, you can check out my details below as well. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Bye.